Okay. Yeah, no good. We haven't got a presentation as such. It's kind of like a Q and A. So really, we just wanted to hear from people who came if they had any questions around open science or open research or, you know, yeah. whether they were actually involved in any open research initiatives no. or. Um, I'm not involved. I wanted to come just out of curiosity because I know if you, you know you've seen more and more open science is coming up the name it's been mentioned open research finding stuff like out there that is more on an open research platform and you know so I was curious to see what the right I thought yeah that's where we're heading in that direction I wanted to hear more about it so that's why I jumped on um yeah good I mean I can take it through even just sorry got just some of the things that the HRB does so I mean I know we have our open access policy uh, for publications and yeah. at the moment I'm looking at that and reviewing it in line with um, Coalition S and Plan S, the sort of um, international consortium of funders in the European um, agencies to look at whether we should join them in the same way that SFI has done to sort of move beyond whether it's a yes or no in an open access publication and whether we retain copyright and you know, whether we have immediate publication without embargoes and things like that. So we're, we have that piece of work that we're doing and how it fits into transformative agreements for journals and all of that. So I, I know you publish quite a lot uh, from Jean and Brian's area. Um, and then we have our data policy so that we sort of um, set our expectations around availability of data um, and how people should manage their data and share manage it during the research process and share it afterwards um, and what kind of expectations we set for sort of authoring and reusing other people's um, data um, mm -hmm. and then we have things like our publication platform um, HRB Open Research which kind of brings together all of the different agendas for open open research and um, supports people to actually use it and to work in a different way and publish findings that they wouldn't necessarily publish elsewhere. So we've we've run a pilot of that for just over three years now. Um, we're looking at it in terms of whether we procure a second phase of work for it and how it fits in with the European um, platform as well. So the Commission have, have their own open publishing platform now, which is built on the exact same model as the one we're using, um, which we modelled on the Wellcome Trust and Bill Gates Foundation and there are a growing number of those so it's kind of like the HRB is a publisher itself but supporting people to do things differently like publish study protocols um, yeah. and then then we're involved in sort of a raft of national um, agenda so we also sign up to um, from the HRB sign up to legislation or sign up to um, statements, I suppose, like the Dora statement, um, we're a signature of that, and um, um, colleague Annalisa Montesani is working um, on narrative CVs and looking at how we actually brief our peer reviewers for grants um, so that they don't dwell on the impact factors um, and look at more of the wider brief of how a person has a rounded sort of skills as a researcher. Um, and then we have, um, we co chair the National Open Research Forum, which is looking at a, a national action plan for Ireland, and that's a systems approach. So it, it's co chaired with the HEA, and we've um, about 90 people involved in that, looking at different working groups, um, which will be brought together. So there's a principles document that has been published by government. Um, there's a landscape report which looks at where we are in all of the different agendas that feed into open research. Um, and then there's a steering group, which is and a funders forum, which is pulling out the work of the uh, policy briefs that are being prepared um, by the different working groups on things like persistent identifiers, um, sort of copyright retention strategies, um, and list them somewhere. Sort of coordinated monitoring of open access at a national level and um, looking at systems level incentification and how that could be put in place within the institutions and um, supporting bibliodiversity there's about 12 of them at the moment that are being taken forward and then by the end of this year there should be a draft plan with some prioritization around it and we're working to try and identify funding to actually bring forward some of those um, 
so that we can build on it in the future. So hopefully it'll be written into the next national innovation re research and development strategy. But um, but we appreciate that there's lots of issues for people and barriers and unanswered questions and how everything's um, everything actually works in the system. Um, and the HRB is trying to put, I suppose, put this in place in a supportive environment. So, so we're looking at, um, in terms of the research data, uh, looking at a data platform where people can go and get advice on how to sort of um, complete their research data management plans, which are now required with the research projects, um, to understand a bit more about the overplay between ethics and open research or the IP and open research and where the boundaries sit and um, how things are done at a European level. Myself and Kay are involved in Horizon Europe and got a, probably didn't even introduce ourselves. I'm just assuming <laughs> if you're HRV, you know us, but I'm the, uh, the programme manager um, for EU programmes and policy in the HRB. And Kay, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm the national contact point for Horizon Europe in health, and oh, I've very good contact I've points in Europe <laughs> in, yes. uh, for FP7 and Horizon 2020 as well. Uh, and I used to work on the public health program before it was the EU for health. Right. Yeah, and I also work as the national delegate for Horizon Europe um, on the health PC. So we're both very much European heads. Um, and I know I sit on uh, some of the EU expert groups as well, like the um, uh, National Point of Reference for Scientific Information. Um, so I would cover that role for the funders, for all of the funders and for the DFERS department um, and sit on things like the um, Council of uh, National Open Science Coordinators, which is kind of the leads for open science from the different bodies. Um, and then we're involved in um, science your policy groups as well at a European level and K is just about to kick off on your national um, uh, network. NCP, the contact, all of the health contact points in Europe um, have put an application together, the NCP network and it involves uh, training NCPs and uh, you know putting uh, together uh, tools and that for applicants and for NCPs to help them apply for uh, European funding. So we have a network. It's a project that lasts seven years over the time of the, of the of Horizon Europe, and that's just gone into the Commission. My goodness, and the two of you sound extremely busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and all of this is all wrapped up. I mean, Horizon Europe has, um, it's sort of adopted open science as the normal way of practice now. So if you want to do research at a European level, you have to publish in open access. Um, yep either journals, platforms, um, you have to share your data as well um, and your uh, workflows and your protocols. You have to publish early, so uh, they're encouraging sort of pre-registration or registered reports. Um, you can get involved in um, open peer review panels. Um, you know, there's lots, there's a whole raft of things now and even on the evaluation of funding grants, um, your track record in open research is taken into account as part of the evaluation. So they've really gone to board on it, like so, um, which is great to see. So they always they provide such a scale to look at how things work. Um, that it's kind of like an experiment, really, to see how it works with the ethics and how it works with the IP and the innovation and um, being able to monitor things across different countries um, and see how they work differently. So it's it's an interesting time. And as you know, for the new European programs, it's probably the same for your own, that it's kind of kicked off a seven year new program. So it's kind of. I'm not, I'm not actually sure, to be honest, because like um, the EMCDA there, it's a European monitoring for drugs, uh, addiction and I'm missing the letter there, Centre, European Monitoring Centre for Drugs and Drugs Addiction. So that's what they, they look at. So it's all drugs related that we look at, but we're really only giving the Irish voice to it. So it's whatever happens related to drugs in Ireland. So that's what all, we have different workbooks that we do. And, you know, we work on them all year and then submit them. And then they contribute to an overall European report 
next year. Uh, like, you know, we're always a year behind. But um, yeah, it, it's so, yeah, so we're like, I know my work would be probably centered in Ireland itself. You know, the content of the reports are really related to Ireland. But it's interesting to see all the rest of the stuff coming in from, you know, when you see the overall final reports and then see how our results match in with other countries. Um, I think there's, what do they have? Uh, I think there's about 28 countries, probably one less now England is gone, but there was about 28, maybe 30 countries involved in the report. So. Um, it's definitely a different way of working because you're working with like I've attended. Um, they had a couple of um, day events in Lisbon and Portugal and. Very interesting hearing different countries views on things, you know, and hearing how they do things and how it relates to what we do here yes. in Ireland and you know that's a very wide open way of engaging with what with with what happens happens it's not narrow it's you know keeping your mind open to the whole of europe as a whole um needless to say i was devastated when brexit occurred that was just <laughs> i i spend a lot of my time in northern ireland so i was just gutted when i heard that brexit was coming and how that was going to impact on funding for part of my work in the UK, you know, like you just sort of think um, it's all changing and like, and we yeah. really don't know how it's going to unfold. And even when you hear of the work that you guys are doing and the amount of different organizations that you're involved with and the move towards this open science or and open research and open access to different journals online, like the wealth of knowledge that's out there we actually don't have a grasp on that is freely available like i've attended a couple of i can't it, i suppose that's what drew me into this um workshop i attended another event earlier in the year and it was um not with i don't think it was with the i don't even know which organization it was with to be honest with you, but they had a huge talk on open research and given tips and guidance on how to go about it and like it for researchers, it's definitely the way to go because you want your work. If you're going to publish something, you want it to be out there. You don't want it to be restricted to an Athens database that nobody can get access to. If you want people to be able to read that work, so it, it's yeah, it's got it. I think it's it's how to do it well and how to support people to actually do it. You know, so that it's. It, make the best use of everything that is of the investments that are made in research and what's available and how to reuse. Um, so I know there, I mean, the HRB is quite forward thinking in actually putting in place uh, things like the secondary data analysis uh, yeah. call that just uh, just went through the board there last last week, I think it was. But, um, you know, things like that. So schemes of how to actually support people to work in a different way. Um, and the whole agenda around research culture, which I think is a, a big part of this conference, you know, to actually shift from the perception um, of how to measure research um, and how to change the culture then within the institution. So I know the Dutch and I think uh, Professor Medima was uh, speaking earlier about how they do it in the Netherlands um, and how they actually value research um, skills over and above just the publication of research. Um, is really changing, um, but it's quite hard because that's the way research has been measured for years and years. So trying to shift the sort of funding from um, pay to read publications and all of those initiatives and how they, for me, it's how they're all connected, all those agendas um, and how they need to work around the system. But look, I know this is, uh, we have to close this in one minute, but if you're around and you want, it's my my alarm to tell me even but um please get in touch with us in the hrb if you're around or if you just want to chat about anything or talk about european stuff um or open research or open science or anything else um feel free to give us a shout and I'll talk to us that. i'll do that sure i'm sure you'll be having some type of a report on the on the conference anyway so i'll get yes. all the contact details absolutely and